Welcome to Don't Overspill. <laughs> I'm Haley. I'm Madison. And we're here to spill all the tea. So our first segment of the day is rapid fire questions. Yes. Yeah. This so is going to be interesting. You have no time to think. You just have to answer them. Say what comes to your mind. Yes. Ready. Okay. <clears throat> I'm nervous. <laughs> I'm not really good on the spot. I'm not this. either. Okay. Ready? Yeah. What is your favorite store? Um, no, fast. <laughs> um, Sheen. It's not even a store. Forever 21. Forever 21. This is hard. Oh, my God. Okay. Um, which celebrity annoys you the most? Celine. <laughs> Were you going to say Celine Dion? <laughs> she doesn't annoy me. <laughs> I was like, what has she ever done? These, um, I don't, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> C- C- Chrissy Teigen. I was going to say the same thing. Wow. Celine Dion. Celine Dion. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm embarrassed. Oh, my God. That's so funny. Okay. What were you afraid of as a child? The dark. That was good. Yeah. You see? Yep. Okay. Um... Would you rather have regrets about actions or inactions? I don't know what that means. It's like, would you rather regret something you've already done or regret something you didn't do? Like, you know what I mean? No. What do you mean no? You have to pick one. <laughs> no, I don't know what you mean. Like, okay, so. How about I regret it if I didn't do it? Like, you regret not doing something. Like, you regret. Oh. You know what, would you rather regret your actions or regret not doing something? I regret not doing something. There's no consequences that way, so. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, if you could afford any car, which one would you drive? Tesla. Easily. Really? Drive itself. I don't have to do anything. They're not expensive. They're not that bad, but, like, they're still out of my budget. I don't know. Maybe, like, a Rolls Royce. <laughs> no. Do you know what car I would drive? What car? Okay, you don't know me that well. This whole office knows what car I would drive. An Audi? No. No? Why do I feel like you like Audis? You don't know me? No. <laughs> I'm offended. This whole office knows besides you, I guess. I'll figure it out. Mm-hmm. Um, morning or evening? Morning. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Early bird. Hell no. Um, finish the phrase. The way to my heart is? Food. Food. I'm a simple person. You just even eat food like that. If, like, if you showed up to my house with, like, a bouquet of flowers versus, like, a bouquet of chicken nuggets, like, I don't like flowers. You know, like, I don't know. Wow. I'd much, food is such a good gift to me. Okay. Whatever you say. <laughs> okay. Wait. Do you, oh, you went. Yeah. Anyway. Do you believe in ghosts? No. Really? No. I believe in, like, like spirits. And, like, oh, like, like, stuff like that. No. I can't watch, like, the like Conjuring movies and stuff like that because it, like, freaks me out. Oh, yeah. I'm terrified of scary movies. Oh. But I don't believe in them. Mm-hmm. Uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, how good are you at keeping secrets? Ooh. Like a 5 or a 6. It depends. Like, if it's, like, a life-ruining secret, then, like, you know. But, like, if it's, like, a stupid secret and I don't really care, like, I'll probably keep your secret. But, like, if it's going to make or break, like my life then you know it depends okay not that good though <laughs> don't tell her a secret <laughs> um what scares you throw up we went over this last time throw up. <laughs> i'm petrified if you can't tell oh my god um if you could be fluent in any other language what would it be italian me too yeah italian buongiorno <laughs> that's all i know what's sorel um what else oh ciao <laughs> that's all I know. I or, took Italian in high school. Me too. Not good that's at it. That's all I it. know. It's buongiorno. <laughs> that's all I remember. Good morning. Good morning. And then buona notte is good night. Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, we were in quarantine. I actually tried studying Italian. I still don't know anything. You took buongiorno. up a language in quarantine? Wow. I tried. <laughs> I literally only know buongiorno. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing it correctly. Buongiorno. <laughs> buongiorno. Mi, ya- mi amo. No, me can't. I don't know. Yeah, it's me. Mi, mi amo. No, that's, that's Spanish. 
Mikiyama. Is it Mikiyama? I think so. <laughs> I know Komo Tikiyami is how old are you? Oh, so maybe it's Mikiyama. 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 I don't know. I think we're literally just <laughs> saying words out of our ass right now. <laughs> All right. Would you rather find your dream job or win the lottery? The lottery. Yeah. If you win the lottery, you wouldn't need a job. I would need a job. To like keep mentally. you busy? I mentally need a job. Or just like even like volunteer at a shelter. Yeah, something to like take up your time. Yeah, but like I'm trying to win the lottery because who isn't? Big. I want to win big. Big. To get my dream car that Haley doesn't know about. <laughs> Why don't you just tell me? A G-Wagon. Oh, that's right. I, I knew that, too. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> Not important. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I cannot. That's all I talk about. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> what object do you misplace the most? My phone. It's a very coincidence. Is it, that the word coincidence? Because I, I have it attached to my hip, like, always, but I lose it. All the time. Mm. If that makes sense. Yeah. It's like when you lose your phone, it's like, oh, can you call my phone? Like, I hate losing, like, my keys or yeah. something that, like, you can't ring. Well, the problem with me is that I keep my phone on silent. Oh. No vibration or nothing. Yeah, so if I lose it, I... Yeah. So, it's fine. Okay. If you could eat one meal for the rest of your life, what would it be? Teriyaki chicken. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> Teriyaki chicken. Mwah. Chef's kiss. Bizarre. Um, can you name more than 10 U.S. presidents? Are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, not like name 10. Like, can you name 10? Oh, thank God. Sure. sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now name 10. <laughs> really? Okay. Barack Obama. Um, <laughs> Donald Trump. Joe Biden. Mm -hmm. Abraham Lincoln. Mm -hmm. <laughs> John Kennedy. How many is that? Five. That's six. I counted five. I counted six. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, um. George Washington. I was going to say, if you missed that one, like, <laughs> that's the only two everyone says is George Washington and Abe Lincoln. <laughs> I don't know. I really don't know. Who's the one that got stuck in the bathtub? One of, yeah, they got stuck. I think it was um, Taft, maybe? <laughs> was it? Who? Taft? How, William Taft? Wasn't that William his name? Taft was a president of the United States. Howard Taft? William Taft? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Woodrow Wilson? That was a president? Yes! <laughs> oh, my gosh. Let's not air this. <laughs> George Bush? <laughs> oh, yeah, I know him. I know him. <laughs> I know him. George H.W. Bush? There's two. His Wasn't father. there two John Kennedys? <laughs> no. There was a John Adams. There's one John F. Kennedy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. All right. I Next episode, like we're doing a history <laughs> lesson. I got, like, six. <laughs> okay. Out of how many presidents? <laughs> Fifty? <laughs> Listen. <laughs> I wasn't born for half of them. <laughs> I, I really don't know. Do you know more? Um, you say, you oh, don't know. Um, no, um, FDR. FDR, the polio guy in the wheelchair. Have you seen Annie? No. No. <laughs> Not a movie person. Oh, Herbert Hoover. Herbert Hoover. Okay. <laughs> We're just going to keep going. Until we name all 50 presidents. <laughs> if, he, if you were an alcoholic drink, what would you be and why? Oh, my God. Um, I feel like I'd be a margarita. Why? Because, like, you start out and, like, you feel like, oh, this is so fun. And then, like, after a while, I just get, like, tired and, like, aggressive. I feel like that's how I am when I drink a margarita. Like, you know? Like, they start fun and then they hit you hard. Oh. Mm hmm mm. I don't get tired when I drink margaritas. I get like, Maddie Daddy. Maddie Daddy. <laughs> wine though. Wine, yes. A wine drunk is like, it's, it's a different kind of drunk. Yeah, it's almost it's like, like a, a euphoric kind of feeling. Yeah. You wake up like, 
the worst headache dehydrated Ever. yeah not fun okay your turn um what would you say is your biggest flaw I, it's not rapid um 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 disorganization <laughs> very unorganized sometimes Describe your boyfriend in three words. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> three words? Mm-hmm. Why can't I even She's think of struggling. words? She's going to be single after this. <laughs> three words is hard, though. I'm trying to, like... What? How? Like, what can you say that's only three words about somebody? Like, three adjectives. Oh, I thought you meant, like, literal three, like, <laughs> goes to the store. Like, like some, you know... <laughs> I thought you literally meant three words. Like like a sentence. No. Okay. Um funny. It's kind of funny. Um <laughs> She's single. She's single. <laughs> There's like so many words to describe him. Um he is very um what's the word? Compassionate, like kind, like he he goes out of his way for other people. Um and he has um, a really good sense of humor. Like, like he. You already said funny. No, like he, he's funny, like as a person, but then he also like, like he can make fun out of like other situations. You know what I mean? Jake, are you sad? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what he would say about me in three words. I don't know. <laughs> Lazy, annoying, <laughs> traumatic. <laughs> Yeah, at least you were nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 20 minutes later. Okay, your turn. <laughs> um, would you rather travel to the past or to the future? Past. Me too. Me too. That was a recite. Mm -hmm. I would love to go back and relive some times. Yeah. Don't rush life. <laughs> okay, where's your go-to food when you're, no, what is your go-to food when you're sad? Probably teriyaki chicken. You see, she doesn't eat, and that's why when she said her food is her favorite thing. See, but I'm picky, but I love food. Like, I don't eat just because I'm hungry. I eat to enjoy it, you know? Her dry bowl of Chipotle. Her Chipotle order is chicken and rice and lettuce. That's, that's true. It. That's it. I'm very picky. She needs, like, an extra bottle of water because it's so dry. <laughs> and she can't swallow it. This is the one thing that everyone agrees on. Like, you know, you have people that agree, oh, I don't like pickles. I like it. Every single person that I tell I hate salad dressing, they look at me like I have like, yeah, like three foreheads. Yeah. Like, you don't like nothing? Like, yes, no oil? No eats, vinegar? Yeah. Nothing? No. She literally gets a salad with no dressing. None. 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 Nope. Just one like time I was served a salad with salt on it. And it was absolutely disgusting. Like the worst thing I ever put in my mouth in my entire life. <laughs> I like took a big bite of it, like not knowing there was salt on it. So like when you go to bite a cucumber, you're not thinking, oh, it's going to be salty. You know what I mean? So like I put like a big bite in my mouth and I was like, and you know, I don't really like salt that much. Like I ask for like no salt on my fries sometimes. So That's biting into a salad full of salt. salt. <clears throat> Gross. Yeah. That's weird. Which moment would you most like a do-over of? I uh, kind, kind of sounded, I don't know, sounds kind of tacky, but when I got accepted to college. Aw, that's cute. Yeah, I didn't think I was going to get accepted, so it was a I very didn't either. nice moment. Me too, I was so happy. I was like, oh my God, I'm not, not going to college. Yeah, <laughs> literally. It was exciting. I made it. Um, summer or winter? summer yeah easily you're if you said winter out of your sociopath <laughs> nobody genuinely enjoys the cold weather and if you do i think there's something wrong with you yeah it's like miserable outside today so miserable it was icy i almost slipped and fell then it was <clears throat> raining and now it's just gray yeah it's dark it's gloomy it's cold and it makes your commute even worse mm -hmm. so not a fan um private plane or yacht Yacht. Yacht. I don't like planes that much. 
Like, like the only reason I like flying is if I'm going on vacation because it's like part of the the fun, the, the fun. But like, mm-hmm. I don't. I would never get on a plane for shits and giggles. Yacht, yeah. <laughs> plane, yeah. <laughs> I would love a yacht. Oh my god, that's the dream. Wake up on a big yacht. I just want a boat. I'll take a sailboat at this point. I'll take a little, <laughs> I little jet ski. I'm not a sailor, but <laughs> I would just love a boat. Yeah. I feel like people with boats, like, they're up here. Oh, yeah. And everyone else is down here. Yeah. <laughs> what advantage advantages are there to being a girl? Um, pretty girl privilege. That's one. <laughs> um, I mean, we weren't drafted for war. That's one. Um, She's going deep. Um, trying to think. I was going to say getting free drinks when you go. Out. That too. That too. Um, well, that's pretty girl privilege. That, that yeah, all falls right, into right. that category. You're right. You're right. That, that goes, there's a lot that goes into that category. So much that goes into that category. Yeah. Um, other than that, Nothing. there's really no makeup. <laughs> I hate makeup. <laughs> okay. What word do you love using? Am I allowed to say this? <laughs> twat is my favorite word ever, ever. When I die, put twat on my tombstone. Like that's how much I love that word. <laughs> it's my favorite word. Oh my God. <laughs> I feel like like it's just, it's not as harsh as like the C word, but it's not as like boring as bitch. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like right in the middle. Okay. It's very creative. Okay. Make that your daughter's middle name, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I could picture it now. Speaking of daughters, how many kids would you like to have? I would like to have three, but like not three boys. You know what I mean? Oh. Hell no. Like, I would want at least one girl, at least, yeah. if not two girls and one boy. And yeah. the boy has to be the oldest one, of course, and then it would be his two sisters under him. Yeah. I, I want a boy first, but at the same time, I would be kind of, like, disappointed because I want a girl. Yeah. So, like, it's always, like, you're scared you're not going to get that girl. Mm-hmm. Like, come on. They have the cutest clothes. They do. And the most prettiest names. Oh God, we're going to match, like, we're going to wear matching shoes, yeah. matching, like, cheetah onesies, like... So cute. Can't do that with a boy. No, you can't do anything. No. Um, after three, though, if I don't get a girl, like, that, that's it, though. Because I'm not risking a fourth boy. Three. I want two. Two. What if you have triplets? What if you have quadruplets? Listen, <laughs> I don't even think that's, like, healthy. Uh-huh. I would be, like, this big. I know. I can't even imagine. Uh-uh. uh-uh. Nope. We are... We are one at a time. We are a one at a time kind of womb over here. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm a twin and like, it like sucks. Like, I mean, I love being a twin, but I'm saying for my mom, yeah. like, I can't even imagine how she did it. Like two cars at the same time, that's, that's two prom dresses, my head. Yeah. two colleges, mm-hmm. two engagements. Two, literally, my mom was like, can you guys like separate it a little bit? <laughs> no. I mean, it Oop. might, but like, No. <laughs> So yeah, that's our rapid fire questions. I hope you all learned a little. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> it's this one. Um, so now you know a little more about us. Okay. All right. So for our next. <laughs> so for our next. <laughs> nest. Our nest segment. Haley, <laughs> you say it. <laughs> for our next segment. We are bringing in a guest. Everyone meet our friend Vicky. Hi. <laughs> cool. Nice to be here with y'all. All right, Vicky, you want to introduce yourself real quick a little bit? Um, my name is Vicky Foster and I am an admin of the Aubie oh, community. Oh. Um oh, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a mom wife. <laughs> cool. Okay, um, so we're here today to talk about um, PCOS. Um, Vicki has had that for some time. I'm not really sure how long. 
So um, our first question is exactly like what is PCOS? So um, PCOS is, it stands for polycystic ovarian syndrome. So basically multiple cysts on your ovaries. But in reality, that's just a symptom of what it really is. It's the hormonal and metabolic imbalance. So um, that's a, it, an imbalance in your reproductive hormones and metabolic hormones. Uh, so that pretty much like affects everything in your life from um, converting energy the way it's supposed to, to like infertility. Wow. Um, what age did you find out that you had it? I was about 15 when I first suspected that I had it. Um, I, my mom took me to the doctor because I had really um, weird periods. I would either not get them or I would get them super heavy. And for like two months at a time, they oh, were wow. really painful. Oh. Yeah. Uh, they brought me to the ground in like a fetal position because of how bad it hurt. So she took me to the doctor and it wasn't like confirmed. It was just like, uh, yeah, I suspect you have PCOS. Um, here's some, or they prescribed me some birth control um, pills, which is kind of normal for a doctor to do with PCOS. Yeah. Um, because it controls and balances your reproductive hormones. Yeah. Um, but at that age, my mom was like, no, cause she felt like it was a pass to, uh, do the dirty. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't get it then, but when it was truly, um, confirmed was when I was about 22, um, my husband and I, at the time he was my boyfriend, um, had a slip up and he kind of freaked out. And um, he was like, I'm not ready to be a dad. And I told him, like, I don't even think I can from what the doctor told me. Um, and then after discussion, it was like, well, you know, we love each other. Why don't we just try? And so at that point, um, I went to my gynecologist and she confirmed that I had PCOS. Wow. So you didn't know for the whole seven years, you like never got it. You never questioned it again, really? Um, well, I didn't want kids at that time. Like I wasn't ready for kids. It wasn't, I wasn't like prepared for a child. It wasn't on my mind. I knew my periods weren't normal. Um, but I was just dealing with it. And it's kind of what you do. You just kind of deal with the symptoms of it. Yeah, you're not going to really question it. Yeah, I, I just yeah. never, like, you know, being, you know, young, I didn't know what to look for and, like, how to go about knowing you have it. Because you really, I don't know. I don't, I don't know the symptoms. Like, I never knew really much about PCOS. So... Yeah, so there's a lot of things that um, come up with PCOS. And basically, all you need to do is be diagnosed with two of those symptoms. Um, the biggest one would be the cysts on your ovaries. Um, but you can have PCOS and not have cysts on your ovaries. It really just depends on, like, what type you have and all of that stuff. There's so much into this. Um, it's it's mind-blowing. So you can have a heritism, which is basically like facial hair growing, um, acne, uh, your hormone, your reproductive hormones are off balance. So you have more testosterone than a woman should. Um, and basically I had almost all the symptoms um, and it was, it was confirmed. So um, you are pre-diabetic, um, you can have type two diabetes, uh, there's like adult acne, um, infertility. There's just so many things that are wrapped up in this that you don't even know. Depression, anxiety, it all comes with it. Wow. I wonder like if you just go to like a regular gynecologist appointment, like can they tell right off, like can they tell or do they have to like specifically look for it? They have to run tests. So they're more than likely going to run hormonal tests um, to see if maybe you don't have a thyroid issue or if, um, like I was saying, your 
uh, female and male hormones are not balanced. Um, they also do ultrasounds, whether it's vaginal or like on top, depending on how heavy you are. Um, and then that's how they confirm the um, diagnosis. Okay. Interesting. Um, so how does it like affect you today? Today, sorry, let me grab this dog. She's going to be running around. <laughs> Come here, Bella. She's going to be running around and not. Oh. Bella. Bella. <laughs> so today, um, I have some of my hormones balanced, um, mainly because I've been using Obby's Hello and Goodbye. So my periods come every month um, on the dot. And I'm not missing those periods anymore. I don't need any medication to induce my period anymore. Um, my anxiety is uh, better than before. It's I can cope with it a little better. I know how to gauge it now um, because the depression and the anxiety is really big when you have PCOS. It's not only a physical disorder that people can't see, um, and the only thing they see in you is that you're heavier, um, because of the way your the insulin isn't absorbed, um, correctly. And so you tend to gain weight and that's all the people see. They don't see the joint pain. They don't see, um, the emotional pain, the mental pain. It, it takes, it took my womanhood away. When I wanted to give my husband a child, finally, it literally, it tore, it almost caused a divorce um, because it was so hard <laughs> to conceive. And um, it took us six and a half years to have our son. And that was with prayer and like medical intervention. Um, so now emotionally, having already dealt with like the hard part of it because infertility, I think for a woman wanting to have kids is devastating. Yeah. And so I was able to overcome that. Um, that part of the emotional and mental distress is done. Uh, but there's just the daily stresses that it's harder for me to deal with than somebody who has balanced hormones. Um, my energy is not there still, you know, uh, it takes me about five times more energy than it takes you to do something as simple as getting up and getting a glass of water. Mm -hmm. So I live in a constant, in constant fatigue. Um, and that's mainly because PCOS causes insulin resistance. And so your body's, your, your, mm -hmm muscle and fat and liver are not absorbing the glucose the way it's supposed to. And instead of like giving it energy, making it energy, it's putting it in your blood system. Yeah. And so that's how like people get type two diabetes. Wow. So it's, it's, it's very complicated. And the sad part of that too, is that the doctors, when you go to the gynecologist, what they're going to tell you to do is lose weight which is like three times harder than anybody else oh, yeah. um, to lose weight. They're going to tell you, here's some birth control pills and here's some metformin, which is a medication for type two diabetes. And that's to kind of regulate your insulin. And that's it. Go home. Good luck. Yeah. They don't explain all this stuff to you. Everything I know is because I've researched because I've researched other people that have researched it. Um, that are going through it and want to try to reverse PCOS, but it's, it's a, it's difficult to do that. It's hard. Everything is harder. Yeah. Dude, they basically just throw you on your own and you don't know. And it's, you don't want, like, they tell you not to research things, but like they put you in that situation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they're like, Oh, don't Google it, you know, yeah. because then you'll think you're going to die. But yeah. if you're not helping me, where else am I going to get information other than from other people who have gone through it? Oh, exactly. That must have been really challenging. It is. 
But like anything else, I mean, life goes on and you can't, you have to try your best not to dwell on it and, yeah. and go forward. It's not like, you know, women in general already have it harder because <laughs> yeah. um, our period, I mean, we are expected to go to work while we're hemorrhaging and um, moody and expect to perform the same as everybody else. And this is for a week, at least at a time, you know? And so put on all these other hormonal crap on top of that. And it's, it's just harder to, yeah. to be or to seem as normal as possible. Yeah. We're pretty much superheroes. Yeah. <laughs> Where's the cape? We're Wonder Women. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you're still married and you have two beautiful kids. So I do. So it was I all do. worth it in the end, right? Yes. Yeah, it is. And um, it's all a, like a learning experience. I couldn't be here talking to you about it if I wouldn't have gone through it. And I think I use and I try to use all my experiences to to try to help. You know, if you're not feeling comfortable with what a doctor's telling you or they're not telling you enough, do your own research and figure out ways to to fix it. Like I'm learning that, um, whey protein isn't great for me because it, it makes my body inflamed gluten, you know, affects it. So it's like, you literally have to change your whole lifestyle in order to, to live healthier yeah. with PCOS. Yeah. yeah. You're just adjusting to it every single day. You're still learning yeah. even all these years oh, later. Yeah. So. Yep. Every day, something new yeah. that I didn't know before. I'm like, oh, well, no wonder. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I learned that it can affect your gum health. And I didn't even know that. That was mind blowing. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. wow. So it's just, it affects every piece of your body mm -hmm. somehow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're just bringing more awareness to everybody. So that's like the most important thing. Yeah. Because Yeah. I yeah. I like I don't I never learned more I never learned anything about it like I'm I was clueless about PCOS. Um, and also the thing with that is one in ten women have it, so no, you could be living with it. Yeah, it's very common, and and it's because the symptoms are so wide that women are living with it and don't even know that they have it, mm -hmm. um, and they're struggling, and they they don't even know it exists, yeah. or it could be a possibility. Yeah. What's like a word of advice you would give to someone struggling with PCOS currently? Uh, not to give up because I know how uh, hard it is emotionally. The, the emotional stress is the hardest part of it because the physical, you can work on it and, and do your best. But when you are mentally not there and you are um, depressed you're not wanting to get up and move. You're not wanting to, to do anything to fix yourself because you're just in that state of depression. Yeah. So just keep fighting, get back up. Don't let it win. Um, beat it, you know, keep going forward. It'll get better. If you do your part, it'll get better. Yeah. That's sweet. Well, thank you, Vicki. <laughs> yeah. You're welcome. Thanks for I'm sorry for all the distractions. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Thanks for talking to us, and we hope you have a great day. Thank you. Thank you for having me, and I hope you guys have a good day, too. <laughs> Bye. Bye. All right. So this <laughs> is where we get real. This is where we spill all the drama. This segment is called Shout Out to My Ex. More like. <laughs> I'm okay. so nervous. So the theme of this is basically we are going to shout out some of the worst and just all around, you know, immature things that our exes I you were have gonna done. Say best. I'm like, there is no. Oh, best. there's no best. No, if there was anything best about them, <laughs> they wouldn't be our exes. So the best thing is that they're gone. Yes, the best thing is that they're blocked on everything. That, that, yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. So. Started off. <laughs> All right. 
How do we, what, what categories are we going for like abusive? Are we going for immature? <laughs> are we going for dramatic? Like what's the most dramatic? Oh, okay. we'll, we'll go like. We'll start easy. Yeah. We'll start easy. Okay. So. It's the most dramatic thing your ex ever did. <laughs> I have a list. <laughs> Where do you want me to start? Like, I, I don't know. I literally don't know. <laughs> So the most dramatic thing that my ex has ever done was, there's multiple, but I'll name one. Multiple, like thousands. Oh, we got time. The most dramatic thing that he ever done was that I mentioned a guy's name. He bought me a Pandora bracelet. We were in public and he broke the bracelet, punched his windshield, um, screaming throwing things in a car in a public parking lot um so then all because i mentioned a guy's name so then a few minutes later cop cars pulled up and then witnesses said that they thought he was going to hurt me so they called the cops and then we had a right i had a way to talk to the cops and say i tell them everything that happened and then we were not allowed to be seen together in that town ever again well, for, like, a certain amount of time, but, like. That, like, exceeds dramatic. <laughs> wow. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. That was, like, not, that was, like, nothing compared to everything that's happened. But that's just a little taste of my last relationship. I think you won that round. <laughs> <laughs> um, mm -hmm. For me, my ex's thing was, like, telling me how to dress. So... One, like if my belly button was showing, like I have a belly button ring. I didn't get that pierced for shits and giggles. Like obviously it's to wear shirts that can show it because it's cute AF. So I would wear like crop tops, you know, nothing crazy. Like my tits weren't out, like, it, like, like a standard, like right here. And we were at like in a basement party and he like walks over and pulls my shirt down, like aggressive, like, like pulls my shirt down. So it's like not, like you can't see my belly button ring. And my friend like, was, what the hell is wrong with you? So what did she do? She lifted my shirt up. <laughs> I'd be crucified. Thoshed everyone. So yeah, it was very dramatic. There was that. And then um, there was the time I was in a bathing suit and he came over and like pulled my bottoms. Cause like, I guess my like cheeks. Yeah. Cheeky. Like pu pulled them. Yeah. Like a dad, like, like dressing his child. Like, yeah, I wasn't allowed to go out, like nothing. I wasn't even allowed to hang out with my family. Wasn't allowed to drink, not even with my family. Wasn't allowed to go to the gym because there's men there. And I, <laughs> I wasn't allowed to become, I was like 17. So I dated him when I was 16 to like 17-ish, a little maybe 18. Um, I wasn't, so I was like, you know, looking for a basic job and I wasn't allowed to be a waitress. Why? Because men could hit on me. Wow. I literally went to the gym and he screamed at me. Screamed. I had to leave. Leave. Uh -huh. But it's the insecurity for me. Mm-hmm. That's Yeah, it was pretty rough. I wasn't allowed to do anything. That's I literally scary. was like I was literally like a prisoner. That couldn't escape. Wow. Mm hmm Yeah, it was pretty it was a pretty dark time in my life. Pretty dark time. Wow. Uh huh. <laughs> I have nothing compared. To you. <laughs> like we just started, and you're already like up here. Yeah, I think I'm gonna win this one. Yeah, overall <laughs> with my stories. My exes are like pure stupidity, but like nothing like that. <laughs> no, my ex was like the worst thing to ever happen to me, but the best at the same time because now I knew my worth going forward. That's true, it's a learning experience. Yes, it was a learning experience. I wasted my time, I wasted so much. It was literally, like I said, the worst time of my life, but I knew what I deserved after that. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's insane. What's the worst thing your ex has ever told you? Told me? Oh, like insulting wise? Mm-hmm. Um, I know mine. 
So I'm curious to see. Like, stu- like insulting like my intelligence. I think that's like a big one. Like mm-hmm. when you call me stupid or like an idiot, things like that. I don't know why that just like hits such a nerve for some reason. Cause I, I'd literally rather you call me ugly than call me stupid. Oh. I don't know why. It's just like, don't insult my intelligence. You know, like I'm smarter yeah. than you. Literally. You're stupid. What's the worst thing your ex has ever said to you? Um, that I am my mom's biggest regret. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, he basically called you like a failed abortion. <laughs> <laughs> like, I am my mom's biggest blessing. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yeah, so. My ex called me a snake in the grass. My ex called me a whore. You want to keep going? <laughs> a slut. A slut whore. The C word. Oh, yeah. Bitch. Yeah. Everything. 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 Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What is... I'm trying to think. Like, There's so many categories we can go into. I know. What is the stupidest thing your ex ever did? <laughs> um... I, I really, I hate that I have to like say this, but so one time we were driving, I was driving and again, he got mad at something I said. So he took the wheel and turned it into like a lane. Okay. He, he didn't like look first. No. Well, thank God it was like a dead road, but oh, like still. Yeah. Okay. So endangering your life. Good. And his. And his. And probably others around you. Mm-hmm. That's okay. I was in the car once with one of my friends and her boyfriend, too. So I was in the back, and they were in the front, and she was driving. Literally the same thing. They're arguing back and forth, and he, like, grabs the wheel, and he's like, I will kill us. And I'm looking. I'm like, okay. Us? That never happened. Us as in all of all three of us or, like, just you two? Because, like, if you're going to kill her, like, I'm, yeah. I'm a go. <laughs> I don't think his intentions were, like, killing us. I don't think that. I think his intention was, like, scaring me. Yeah. But, like, he did it completely wrong. That's like, traumatizing. Like nothing, like there was no, like there was no cars coming, but you don't ever do that. No. Okay. So. Um, what else? What else, <laughs> what else do you want to know? Sorry. What? What's, I'm trying to think how to phrase this. What's like the biggest lie that your ex ever told? Like what, what's like your, like a lie? <laughs> Zoom in on this face. <laughs> Um, that he loved me. Okay. Okay. That's he a good cheated one. on me. Not once, not twice, three times with my friend while living with me. Took my car to go see her. Not once, not twice, multiple times. Took my car while living with me to go see my friend and cheated on me. Guys, this is the same person, by the way. This isn't like multiple <laughs> people. This is one human being that has done all of these things. All of this. All of this. And then be burned alive. The mm-hmm. icing on top of everything that he got a tattoo when we broke up that says loyalty. <laughs> <laughs> loyalty. They always want to be Gandhi after like completely ruining your life. <laughs> what? Yeah. And he like wrote a caption that like said like something about me, like referring to me just being like, you know, not loyal. Like, what? I don't, I, I don't know. I, I still, to this day, don't know. I don't want to know. Wow. But, yeah. Sounds like he's got a couple uh, screws loose. So many. It's not all there. So many. <laughs> but, yeah, so it was a very bad time in my life. I tried to escape multiple times. You're probably wondering why I never left. I tried. I really tried. But he was just one of those, like, psychos. Manipulative. Very manipulative. Manipulative person. Couldn't leave tried to you know harm himself oh my god just etc it was just like impossible to leave basically um so i finally left finally and, and you I'm, can too yeah <laughs> you're not stuck seriously you're not stuck you have to do whatever you got to do to get out of those kind of relationships because it's not healthy for you or for them, or for your family. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like I said, he was living with me at the time. So, like, my relationship with my family kind of changed a little bit at the time. Um, 
So it sucked. It really did. Um, but like I said, it was all a learning lesson. Um, you know, I grew up. And that, that relationship made me grow up, honestly, a lot. It made me mature, opened my eyes. And now I have my Prince Charming. <laughs> I can't get enough of these sound effects. I, yeah. I'm glad you know which ones are which. I've learned now. The yellow is the clapping. The orange is the laughing. The green is the boo. And then the other ones are like irrelevant. <laughs> um, my ex cheated on me in France. Why like was a he in whole, France? Like a whole ass country. For like a trip. Like a tour. Vacation? Yeah, like a tour. Like a school tour. Oh. So, yeah. And um, I FaceTimed him one night. We're on FaceTime. And one of his friends in like the background like, said something. I forget exactly what he said, but it was like kind of like, a, oh, did you tell her? And I was like, tell me oh, what? My stomach would dropped, dropped, dropped. I was like, and then like he was laughing it off. He was like, no, they're just joking. They're just joking. And he went the whole like rest of the trip without telling me. I'm pretty sure this was like in the beginning. And not till he gets home, the day we're supposed to hang out, he texts me and he's like, I did the thing. That's what he said. Quote, unquote, I did the thing. I said, what thing? <laughs> he goes, and I quote, the bad thing. What's the bad thing? Like, like did you kill somebody? Did, like, <laughs> like, there's so many different, like, ways that could go. This, this is all over text, by the way. And he texts me. He was like, I was like, you hooked up with somebody? Question mark. He was like, yeah. Y-E-A. Yeah. Y-E-A. Yeah. Short and sweet. You know what I said? Goodbye. <laughs> We're done. Showed up to my house like an hour later with like Twix bars because I, I liked Twix at the time. Oh, so romantic. <laughs> I was just like, what are you doing here? And it was just like a whole back and forth kind of thing. And you want to know what he admitted to me, which was even stupider on his part? He admitted the only reason he told me was because one of our friends was going to tell me. So basically, if, she, if he didn't, she was going to. We always find out. We always find out. We always find Not out. Not for nothing. Your friend only said something on FaceTime. I was going to pick up eventually. Yeah. yeah. Like, hello. That's the thing. You insult my intelligence. <laughs> I'm not stupid. <laughs> I know what you're doing. <laughs> Don't challenge her. Don't challenge me. Wow. But it's okay because then two weeks later, I went to Italy and I came back with someone else. So it's okay. Okay. I can't do it. Okay. You know, it happens. So if you're upset, go to another country. Yeah. That's what you got to do. I guess. <laughs> Not for, it was like you couldn't cheat on me in America? Wait, I, as soon as me and my ex broke up, I went to the Bahamas. Really? Wow. Wow. So if you're sad over a boy or a girl, take a trip to another country. Take a trip. Word of advice. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's literally I was the answer. Like, I was like, this was your worst mistake. I was like, I'm going to Italy in two weeks. Goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> Buongiorno. 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 <laughs> Sucare il mio cazzo. That means suck my dick. <laughs> I'm dead serious. That's what it means. <laughs> What's another one? Ufa. Ufa. That's, that's Italian too. I mean, like, like what the, like. You know, it's like a general word. Like, what the hell? Like, oofa. <laughs> Where was this all before? <laughs> well, now we're getting into, like, cursing. I know some, like, cursing in Italian. <laughs> okay. Holy crap. That was so funny. I was not <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> All right. High school Italian paid off. Thank God. <laughs> Your mother would be proud. <laughs> <laughs> my mom's not Italian. My dad. No. Your dad would be proud. <laughs> I can speak more Italian than my dad can, and my dad, like my grandparents, are off the boat. Well, don't tell your grandparents that language. Oh no. My dad. One time we were out to dinner. Instead of the shrimp Tuscany, he ordered the shrimp Tuscany. Uh oh. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm mhm. Mm yeah. My aunt's Italian and orders the shrimp too scanty. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> Wait, what was? I, I never mind. What? <laughs> so we 
um, someone we know is Italian too, and he wanted he he was naming pastas. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and the word was spatula, but he pronounced it sp- <laughs> sp- sp- spatula. 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 <laughs> spatula. It was like which one of these is not a pasta, and it was like linguine, penne, <laughs> spatula, and he was like spatula, sp- spatula. <laughs> It's so funny. This oh my is God. a very big inconvenience, this microphone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, what else? I think this is the second man. People have had enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, yeah. Um, know your worth. If your exes are anything like ours, run. Especially hers. Run for the hills. Fast. Very fast. Go and don't look back. <laughs> go to another country. And find someone else. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're both thriving in our new relationships. Mm-hmm. We're thriving. We're thriving. <laughs> Happily. All right, what's next? <laughs> All right, so this next segment is part of our community survey. We asked some people to share their most embarrassing moments with us. And some of these are pretty good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Shall we begin? Yeah. All right. Here we go. A few months ago, I had my mother-in-law at Home Depot. We had moved in with her this year because of Alzheimer's. She wanted new countertops, so I took her to Home Depot to look at options. As we were talking to the very sweet young lady about the different types of stone, my mom, my mom, her mother-in-law looks at the lady and says, yeah, that one is nice. She does freaky sex stuff in the, <laughs> with my son in the bedroom. I about died right there in the kitchen area of Home Depot as my mother-in-law just went right back to talking about countertops as if nothing (laughs) happened. There is nothing more uncomfortable than, like, your significant other's parents bringing up, like, sex. Like, no. To a stranger. To a stranger. And Home Depot. If I were the worker at Home Depot, I would have been like, okay, (laughs) cool. (laughs) Good for you. I would have been like, so do you want the counter? Do you want the countertops or not? (laughs) I wouldn't even know what I would do if I was a daughter-in-law. I probably would have the do- shoved yeah. my head up my own ass like that. Oh. <laughs> that that's embarrassing. That's embarrassing. I don't even. I look. I like. I'm trying to put myself in that situation, and I literally don't know what I would do. I would have just been probably silent and just looked around like. <laughs> Who's okay. that? Who said that? Okay. Don't be that mother-in-law. No, don't. It's very uncomfortable. Okay. I once walked through the whole bar after using the restroom with toilet paper hanging from my pants. Not one person said anything until I got back to my friends. You see, that's a problem. That's a problem. Come on, guys. Like, we, we need to help each other out. Do better. Do better. Do if you better. see someone walking with toilet paper hanging out of their clothing, just let them know. Yeah. I feel like people find it more uncomfortable to be the person to, to like tell them. tell them, but like you're doing them a favor. Yeah. Hello. Like if I had something on my shirt and no one says anything and I'm just walking around with shit on my shirt, like yeah. that's not fair. She said she was what at a bar. Yeah. So like everyone was drunk. Yeah. So like you should have the balls to say something if yeah. you're drunk. Just be a good person and do a good deed. Yeah, it's not that hard. This is what you can do for your country. Oh. <laughs> for your people. Okay. One night when my oldest was in kindergarten, they had an art show at his school. His teacher was there and said, make sure to complete your at-home reading tonight. My son said, oh, we don't read at home. (laughs) That's another thing is when, like, your kids kids. embarrass you. Yeah. This is all, like, people aren't even embarrassing themselves. It's either your mother-in-law. They just your spot up. (laughs) Right off the bat. That's why when you have, like, toddlers, you have to be careful what you say. Yeah. They'll repeat after you. Yeah. They'll tell everything. They'll like tell that like people your biggest secret. Mm-hmm. It's so funny when little kids. It's like my parents are fighting. Like they yeah. have no idea. So what you're innocent, about. but like, <gasps> wow. <laughs> Way to really blow your mom's spot up. That's there. so funny. Or like the um, they accidentally say like, oh, me and my mom did my homework. Like, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. 
mommy did my homework last night. Like, oh, that's funny. Dude, the best thing, though, is, like, my dad would do my math homework when I was younger. So we would go in for class, and, like, they would call us up to do examples. Uh. And I had no idea what I was doing. And she's like, well, you did the homework. And in the back of my mind, I'm like, no, no, I didn't. <laughs> With a little help. A little, little, little help. <laughs> More like I sat there and cried, and he did the whole thing <laughs> for me. <laughs> Threw a tantrum. But yeah, it's okay. Wow, that's traumatizing. Oh my God, yeah, no. I'm keeping my kids like muzzled when we go in public, <laughs> like back yeah. to school night. <laughs> they can't speak. No, they just sit there and don't say anything. <laughs> okay. Any more? In college, I had a tube top on with a zip-up jacket. Unzipped oh so well. with no bra on. I also had a crossbody backpack. I left class and was walking down the hall and noticed a breeze. The strap on the bag had pulled down my top, and there I was, walking down the hall, flashing everyone. Uh, <laughs> that's like, there's probably nothing worse than like accidental flashing, like accidental nudity. <laughs> <laughs> my jaw is to the ground. I don't know. Like, I feel like. You can't college? see that. She's at college? Yeah. Oh, my God. That poor girl. <laughs> she, she probably dropped out. Oh, yeah. I would have dropped out. The of people that probably saw her tit. Like, <laughs> like, you're not, I mean, it's one thing to be drunk at a party, but you're literally chilling, walking to class. Walking to class, yeah. Sober. Midday. Lights on. Yep. A big crowd. So, I guess, um... Wear a bra with your zip-up jackets if you're not going to wear a tank top. Or... Don't wear a tube top to class. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. So sorry for you. Awesome. <laughs> I girl probably dropped out of college. Probably went home and cried. I would have. I literally would have cried. I don't even know what I would have done. Dropped out. Dropped out. <laughs> Moved back home. Or Changed my name. Or would have literally done like online schooling. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last one. I peed my pants in public after having my daughter. We were in Goodwill, and I needed to change her diaper, but I also needed to use the restroom. I chose to change her first, thinking I could get it done, then hand her to my mom so I could pee. I chose wrong. I sent my mom out into the store to buy me a pair of jeans. Thank God we were in Goodwill. <laughs> so we've had nudity, peeing in public, <laughs> mother-in-laws talking about sex. Wow. Wow. It's pretty, those are some embarrassing things. It's very uncomfortable. Yeah. Have you ever peed yourself in public? No. No. I have once. The only time I've ever peed myself was from laughing so hard. Yeah. And I pissed my fucking pants. <laughs> no, I told you I peed myself when I was younger <laughs> on the elevator. Because yes. I got stuck. I was going up to my room to go to <laughs> the bathroom. And I got stuck on the elevator by myself. And I was young, so I didn't have a cell phone. And I was stuck by myself on an elevator, so I literally got so scared I peed my pants. <laughs> it wasn't a lot, but I, I probably would have done the same thing. Uh, you, you don't imagine? know how long you're gonna be stuck for. You literally think at that age, you literally think you're gonna die. Yeah, like you're trapped in an elevator. That by is my yourself. biggest fear: yeah, is dying from falling in an elevator, catching on fire, and drowning. Those are my three. Yeah, I have nightmares about those three things. Yeah. I couldn't go in elevators by myself. Like, I still can't, honestly. The amount of dreams I've had where I'm in an elevator and it just falls. Uh, and then you wake up, like, right before yeah. it's going to hit the ground. I, like, I always, like, those dreams make you think, what would you do in that situation? Like, you're, kind of, you're pretty much dead. Like, there's, they say if you time. You have to jump. The jump. But, like, there's, yeah. like, a one in a million chance of you actually timing it. They said something like you're supposed to lay in, like, a fetal position or something like that. I don't know. I don't want to imagine. I don't want to. I, I hope I'm never in a plummeting elevator. So. Yeah. That's why I don't go by myself anymore. No. It's traumatizing. So what's the most embarrassing thing that's happened to you? I, I don't know. It's, I don't get embarrassed easily. At all. I do. But like. I'm trying to think. You don't have any? I have, I have one. What's yours? This is recent, actually. So oh. I tried thinking of something like, like, it's weird. Like, there's a difference between embarrassing and then, like, yeah, you know? Like, so I was in the mall, and I was Christmas shopping, and I was with my sister, 
and we were getting our grandparents like this custom made like thing. So we went up to one of the stands and it was like a 30 minute wait. So we were like, let's just go get food. Little did I know. So I chose Salad Works because, you know, we're trying to be healthy. Normally I go to Sarku and get my teriyaki chicken, but I went to Salad Works and waited in line, got my food, paid, went and sat down and there was no fork in the bag. So I thought, and I went back up and I didn't cut like the, the line. I went like around and I asked like a person that wasn't the cashier and I was so nice about it. I was just like, Hey, can I get a fork really quick? Like I didn't get one. She had no problem. Just handed me the fork. I walked away and the woman in line looks at me and goes, wait your damn turn next time. Oh, hell no. I was looking around, like thinking like maybe she had a kid with her. I looked at her. I was like, talking to me? Like, I was like, excuse me? She was like, yeah, wait your fucking turn next time. <laughs> She's getting heated as she's telling the story. I started to, I was like, who the fuck do you think you are talking to? I was like, I wasn't even bothering you. So I started waving my fork in this woman's face. I was like, I was getting a fork. So lo and behold, you know how food courts are generally very, very loud. You could hear a pin drop in this food court. <laughs> That's how silent it got. And I wasn't off in the corner, but dead center, literally dead center <laughs> in the food court. This woman is screaming on the top of her lungs. Like her husband starts screaming at me. Then security came over and they were trying to calm her down. She just wouldn't stop all over a fork. Everyone and their mother is staring. It's so radio silent. We were the talk of the food court. I was walking around the mall after that and people were like, yo, did you hear about the fight with the fork? Like that, that's what people thought it was about. It was just like about a fork, which kind of, it kind of was. It was. A plastic fork. Mm -hmm. And you ruined my day. Mm -hmm. I packed up my salad and left. Because <laughs> at that point, everyone was staring at me. Yeah, you can never sit there and just enjoy your salad. No. I, I was when trying to enjoy my salad as she's still screaming. <laughs> she did not say, you want to know the best part about the whole thing? The fork was in the bag the whole time. <gasps> when I got home, I found the fork. But you know what? They put, the, like, it's a plastic bag, then the salad. Then they give you a brown bag with, like, the bread. Oh. It, it was in the bag with the bread. Mm. So I got home, and I go to open the salad, and I go to grab the bread. And I'm looking at the fork, and I'm looking at the other fork. And I said to my sister, I was like, hey, there was a fork the whole time. She was like, no, there wasn't. So, yeah. Uh, it was all for nothing. I had a fork the whole time. But to be honest, even if I didn't have the fork, like, who are you to, no. to say something to me? Like, I wasn't bothering you. I wasn't bothering anybody. Just wanted to eat my damn salad. And you had to, like, start a whole big thing with me. Yeah. And they had a kid with them. This poor kid's eating his Wendy's McNuggets watching Coco Melon. And his mom is, like, standing on a chair, like, screaming at me. Yeah. It was so embarrassing. Normally, arguments like that, like, they're not embarrassing, but it's the fact that the entire food court was watching, mm -hmm. and it was dead silent. Mm -hmm. and you're probably on social media. Oh, I said, I, I packed up my salad. I was like, let's go before I end up on TikTok. <laughs> probably. <laughs> probably um, on TikTok. Yeah. Honestly. honestly. If you see me, <laughs> tag her. Let me know. Tag me. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So embarrassing. I hate going to the mall now. Yeah. Just it's like scary dealing with people mm -hmm. in general. But yeah. I don't have any really embarrassing stories, honestly. Like, I'm just embarrassed in my whole life. <laughs> honestly, like, this is embarrassing, the fact that I'm even saying this. But this was, like, recently, like, a few years ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't, I can't even say, believe I'm saying this right now. But somebody asked where we lived, North or South America, and I did not know the answer to that question. Oh my god. I, I really, I like. I think Madison needs a geography, yeah. history mm -hmm. lesson. <laughs> <laughs> that was like the worst subject in class. In it's school. hard. It's hard. It's just so boring. So boring. So boring. I, I just knew sleep. I lived in the United States, in New Jersey, in Titan Falls. That's about it. That's all I need to know. That's so funny. Uh huh. When I was like. Was I, I think I was 11. Or no, I was 9. I was 9 at the time. 
and I was down the shore in Wildwood and I was there for a dance competition. So I was there with all my friends and we wanted to ride the upside down roller coaster. And for whatever reason, there was not only a height requirement, but there was an age requirement. So we met the height limit, but you had to be 11 years old. Don't ask. I have no idea. It was the weirdest thing I've ever seen. So we really wanted to ride it. So we were like, let's just go on. Like we meet the height requirement. Like what are they going to do? Ask us our age. So we go up there and my friend was like, just in case, like just tell him we're 11 years old. I'm like, okay, easy enough. So we get up there and the guy's like, okay, like stand measure. And he's like, how old are you? I'm like, I'm 11. He's like, what year were you born in? (gasps) My ass said 2000. (laughs) I went forward two years instead of back two years. So instead of 1996, I said 2000. He goes, really? You'd be seven. And I was like, oh, he let us on anyway. I guess, you know, he appreciated the effort. My, I was like, oh, (laughs) that's funny. The actually, not, like it's not really embarrassing but kind of is but like so when I was younger I used to go to Hershey Park with my family and my sister and her my cousin are so tall and I'm so short compared to them mm-hmm. and I would cry like in Hershey Park you have to be like a candy to reach a certain requirement yeah like to the go Reese's on rides. and the yes. yeah and I was always the shortest one and to get onto the ride I would cry to my mom and I'd be like this isn't fair screaming like throwing a tantrum obviously so my mom literally went out and got me disco shoes and <laughs> put my hair in a bun so I can go on rides with my family. <laughs> like, embarrassing because imagine what I look like. Oh, my God. Like, disco shoes and a bun. I need to see the disco shoes. That, that's what I, I need, need to see. see. I will bring in pictures. Disco shoes. Those, yeah, those are very elevated. Like, that's, like, people, like, they obviously knew what we were doing. Oh, yeah. Oh, they can always tell. They can I, see when you walk and then like pass them, you go up, 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 up on your tippy toes and then back down. Oh yeah, oh, they yeah. can see you. I tried everything. I tried tippy toes, it didn't work. So my mom literally got me disco shoes. Yeah. What are they going to do? Tell you to take your shoes off? No. no. <laughs> That's the thing. Places like Hershey Park, they're just like, yeah, whatever. Like, just go. <laughs> they, it's more work for them to like, you know, like, tell, like, oh, take your hair down and take your shoes off. Like, yeah. What's that going to do? Going on a roller coaster, relax. Yeah. Oh my God. If we're talking embarrassment as a child... <laughs> that that we can do all day. Go to my Facebook page. That's its own embarrassment oh my alone. God. My Facebook from 2010 to like 2013. Yeah. Albums. Traumatizing. Traumatizing. Mm-hmm. Who did I think I was? The, the, the peace sign <laughs> and the, 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 the plank. Poof. The poof. The poof. Yes. The planking. The, those stuff. Oh, the planking. The planking. The pictures in the street. Oh. Like thinking yeah. you're so cool. And like, do you ever do like the love sign? Yes. Yes. Connect like the heart with your yeah. friends. Yeah. Me and my friend actually were those people we drew on our stomachs one time. And yeah. we're like, she's my best friend. Like, come on. Me and my friends used to do like YouTube videos together. Like, we acted like that 70s show one time. <laughs> like, acted like we were like giving birth one time. Like, embarrassing. <laughs> oh my God. I used to make videos too. My uncle has a whole, a whole home video album. There's a video of me playing piano at like five years old. And I had no idea what I was doing. And I was just babbling <laughs> like ran out like duh, 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 duh. <laughs> literally so bad they always Why? threaten to show it to like people i bring around oh yeah so like the first time they met jake they were like you want to see the video of Haley playing piano i was like absolutely not no <laughs> no <laughs> nope 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 all right so that is the end of episode two we hope you enjoyed cheers <laughs> We may have overspilt this time. (laughs) Just a little bit. Bye, guys.